Royal Highness, Minister Fayo, Your Excellencies, High Jury Members, dear finalists, ladies and gentlemen from the final financial inclusion sector all over the world. Given the exceptional circumstance of a worldwide pandemic, we can unfortunately not come together here in Luxembourg at the European Investment Bank. We can, however, celebrate online. So welcome to the 2020 digital live stream edition of the European Microfinance Award. The ceremony will be held mainly in English. Parts of it will be in French and a translation is available in both languages as well as in Spanish. And all you need to do is to click on the headsets that you find at the bottom of your screen on the right hand side and floor stands for this ceremony without any translation. The European Microfinance Award is jointly organized by the Directorate for Development, Cooperation and Humanitarian Affairs of the Luxembourg Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs. The European Microfinance Platform and the Inclusive Finance Network Luxembourg. This year's topic is encouraging effective and inclusive savings. And uh, this 11th edition intends to recognize organizations from the South active in the financial inclusion sector, encouraging the effective and widespread use of savings. Especially in the current situation with economic lockdowns and shuttered businesses, savings are more important than ever and play a crucial role for low income and excluded populations. European Microfinance Award is an initiative of the Luxembourg government and the award money of €100,000 rewards excellence and innovation in financial inclusion. For the Directorate of Development, Cooperation and Humanitarian Affairs, financial inclusion is an important tool to poverty alleviation. Today's welcoming dress is given by Luxembourg's Minister for Development, Cooperation and Humanitarian Affairs, Franz Fayo, and in his speech he will highlight the importance of creating resilience and the relevance of encouraging savings, especially during the health crisis we are currently facing. Royal Highness, dear Mrs. Pangestu, members of the High Jury, Excellencies, honorable guests, dear friends, the European Microfinance Award and its ceremony represent an important annual event for all of us involved in inclusive finance. It allows us to draw the attention of the larger financial sector, as well as of the general public, to the crucial role that inclusive finance plays in promoting access to finance, one of the major drivers of socio-economic development across the world. As you all know, this year, things are different. While I would have preferred to welcome you in the atrium of the EIB, this year's digital event also allows for a larger participation of the sector, and I'm happy that hundreds of experts and key stakeholders have joined us today. Whereas Luxembourg continues to maintain a generous target of 1% of gross national income for development assistance in these difficult times, it has become clear that traditional grant-based aid will not be sufficient to translate the sustainable development goals into reality. This is where the inclusive finance sector can and should help. Today, faced with a health crisis of unprecedented magnitude, we will have to rebuild the weakened economies in developing countries by creating resilience, but also by providing new opportunities to the financially excluded. As outlined in the coalition agreement of Luxembourg's government, inclusive and innovative finance remains a key priority for us. We consider the financial sector to be a key player with a very important role in implementing the, the SDGs. For almost three decades, our development cooperation has therefore worked collaboratively with the financial sector. We have created an ecosystem that nurtures and supports innovation, which includes the European microfinance platform, as well as the inclusive finance network, both co-organizers of this event. 
Beyond these two partners, Luxembourg has grown to become a key center of excellence in inclusive finance, providing targeted support to developing countries. Our ecosystem has recently been enriched by the presence of the Alliance for Financial Inclusion, which opened a representation office in Luxembourg at our House of Microfinance in October. In the future, we will pursue and even strengthen our support to the inclusive and innovative finance sector to ensure that the most vulnerable populations, too often left behind, have access to basic financial services, including savings, in order to strengthen their resilience and enable their active participation in a sustainable economic recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, when we chose the topic of encouraging effective and inclusive savings a year ago, we were aware of its potential. However, we could not have imagined the way in which its relevance would be illustrated by a pandemic, which led to social distancing and lockdowns that took an important toll on our economies and thereby also on the entrepreneurs, their families and their communities around the globe. Over the past year, savings have been critical in providing safety nets to millions of people. Individuals and enterprises without sufficient savings faced financial pressure when economic activities were disrupted. And micro, small and medium enterprises need to be resilient as they represent the backbone of our economies. In these difficult times, inclusive savings have allowed to lessen the impact of the pandemic. I am confident that this year's European Microfinance Award will draw attention to the value of savings as a necessary financial service and create a momentum that will encourage their use for long-term planning and drive women empowerment. If savings products are designed based on the needs of the customers and are well integrated with other inclusive finance services, trust is created between the customer and the financial service provider. The action of the three finalists of this year's European Microfinance Award on encouraging effective and inclusive savings reflects this. Her Royal Highness, the Grand Duchess, will announce the winner of this year's award in a few minutes. But let me tell you that we have spent a lot of time discussing at the High Jury and that the decision was not an easy one. The three candidates have done and are doing excellent work as you will witness in the upcoming films. Ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to welcoming you again in person in Luxembourg for next year's edition. And please let me wish all of you a good digital European microfinance week. It is a tradition before the announcement of the finalists to have a look at last year's winner. The theme in 2019 was strengthening resilience to climate change, and the winner came from Kenya. APA Insurance Limited won the award in recognition for its index-based area yield and livestock insurance program. APA Insurance covers more than 350,000 families whose livelihoods are largely based on agriculture. Over 75% of farmers in Kenya are smallholders and they are especially vulnerable to the economic impacts of climate change. What did the company plan to use the prize money for? Well, their first priority was building sand dams. Uh, these constructions are, however, currently on hold due to COVID-19. Their second priority was promoting education and creating awareness for climate change resilience insurance solutions. And Mr. Ashok Shah, APA Insurance Director, will now tell us a little bit more about their use of the award. We, we have continued strengthening resilience to climate change. We, we have agreed that we will provide the covers to the pastoralists and smallholder farmers. Now for the smallholder farmers, first, we, we have continued strengthening resilience to climate change. We, we have agreed that we will provide the covers to the pastoralists and smallholder farmers. Now for the smallholder farmers, First time uh, we have gone for the short rains, which are starting in October, November. And we are looking at uh, insuring 100,000 farmers 
And this time we are using the prize money to create a SMS uh, ca campaign, which will send SMSs to the farmers and the farmers will respond on the SMSs and they will get information on the area yield insurance covers and also on improving planting practices. And what will happen is, is, is that as they respond, we will also be then ensuring, uh, asking them to insure either through our agents or through our aggregators. And on the, uh, for the pastoralist, we have just signed a contract with the government and the contract will be, cover the parcel list for the whole year from October this year until uh, August next year, where, whereby we will be insuring them for the short range and the long range. Thank you, Mr. Shah. These are excellent news and thank you for this positive feedback. Our keynote speaker today is an Indonesian economist. Between 2004 and 2014, she served as Indonesia's Minister of Trade and then as Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy. Marie Elka Pangestu has a vast experience of over 30 years working in the academic field for international organizations as well as for governments. Currently, she is the World Bank Managing Director for Development Policies and Partnerships. She will talk now about the importance of financial inclusion, the role of a saving around the world, and the growth of digital financial services. So, Ms. Panjastu, the floor is yours. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good day to everyone. I would like to thank the Grand Duchess and Minister Fayo for inviting the World Bank Group to share some thoughts on financial inclusion and the role of savings. We value Luxembourg's continued commitment on financial inclusion and hosting this prestigious European Micro Finance Award event. On this occasion, we would also like to thank Luxembourg for its continued support to the World Bank's group for its development work, including on financial inclusion. I am impressed by the quality of the work of today's nominees for the 2020 prize, with this year's focus on encouraging effective and inclusive savings. We need a lot of innovations and creative solutions. The finalists put emphasis on doorstep savings collection. This is an important method to facilitate savings for people without digital means. Financial inclusion is a key focus for the World Bank Group, as it is an enabler to reducing poverty and boosting po prosperity around the world. Access to reliable savings product at regulated financial institutions help people, especially the poorest, manage fluctuations in income and cope with adversity. The COVID-19 induced global economic shock underscores the importance of having a cushion of savings during periods of hardship. Most people living in extreme poverty or on less than $1.90 per day experience seasonal swings in their earnings. For example, smallholder farmers' income is concentrated during harvest season. The ability to save enables them to smooth consumption and manage large expenses, such as seeds and fertilizer purchases or school fees at the beginning of a term or health expenses from an illness. Providing individuals with simple, informal savings technologies can substantially increase investment in preventive health and reduce vulnerability to health shocks. A Kenya study found that providing a safe place to keep money alone leads to an increase in health savings of 66%. So when we are thinking about financial inclusion, we need to look at a comprehensive suite of products and services, from payments, savings, credit and insurance, and there is still a lot of work to be done to address these issues. There are significant gaps in developing regions between the proportion of adults who have saved and those who are saving at a financial institution. Savings at formal financial providers are valuable to the poor because they help consumers to strengthen their financial profile, data on savings behaviors, 
and savings balances, which can then be useful for credit analysis. Limited access to savings products among low-income and rural populations create gaps between formal and informal savings. It is also due to the perception among low-income individuals that their savings are not large enough to warrant a savings product at a financial institution. Global Findex data show the widest gaps between formal and informal savings are in sub-Saharan Africa, where more than half of people reported savings, but only 15% said they saved with a formal financial institution. Our research also shows that women, low-income and rural populations have lower access to saving opportunities at financial institutions. Where we have seen progress in financial inclusion, this has been made possible largely due to digital technologies and mobile phones in particular. Digital financial services have expanded rapidly over the past decade. And we are seeing evidence that the COVID-19 pandemic is accelerating the pace of this development as people seek ways to keep social distance while ma maintaining economic activity, and how social protection transfers are actually being facilitated by digital payments. Our joint research with Cambridge University shows that around the world, there is continued commitment of countries to digital financial services and fintech during the COVID-19 crisis. Regulators surveyed also said that they were looking to accelerate the pace of digital innovation in response to the crisis. We see increases in volumes of digital payments, including mobile money, government to person or G2P transfers, and remittances. However, governments could do much more. For example, accelerating the creation of digital ID systems and linking it to current government transfers being made digitally. This could bring 100 million more people into the formal financial system. Technology is helping to reduce costs and increase convenience for millions of people with notable gains in low-income countries. However, there are many people yet to benefit from this growth in digital financial services. Microfinance organizations remain critical providers of financial services, including for many low-income individuals and communities. They increasingly use digital technology to increase efficiency, reduce costs, and adapt to needs of customers. They also operate where the ecosystem and infrastructure necessary for digital financial services are still not avail available or well developed. In my own work with microfinance in Indonesia, we used to ask the question, how should we design apps and deliver financial services on the dumbest or simplest smartphone? Let me close with what we are doing at the World Bank to further the financial inclusion and microfinance agenda. First, through country projects linked to financial inclusion, both through lending operations and advisory work. Between 2013 and 2020, we lent more than 10 billion through our investment projects and support for technical advice to governments. Private sector support for financial inclusion topped more than $12 billion during the same period through IFC investments and MEGA guarantees. Second, on universal financial access. We partner with a wide array of public and private sector stakeholders. We also make investments in building data, research, and global advocacy. For instance, we have a partnership with the Gallup organization and funding from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and we produce the Global Findex database together, which is the most comprehensive data set on how adults save, borrow, make payments, and manage risk. The Findex database has enabled empirical research on financial inclusion and led to improved understanding of the factors behind progress and the impact this has on the poor. One important finding was that having a bank account, which is one measure of financial inclusion, is only a sufficient condition. It needs to be accompanied by financial literacy to know how to use savings and other financial products. Third, the World Bank contributes to global advocacy on financial inclusion through participation in global forums, such as the G20 Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion, as well as in work with standard-setting bodies and through the consultative group to assist the poor, or CGAP. 
In conclusion, I would like to appreciate the Government of Luxembourg for their continued commitment to the financial inclusion agenda and look forward to continued partnership. And I would like to especially appreciate those who have participated in this competition. I hope that many of your innovative initiatives can provide solutions for encouraging effective and inclusive savings and to be scaled up to address the needs of over 1 billion people who continue to lack access to a bank account and the many more who are not benefiting from the financial services that can make their lives better. Thank you. And a better life is what all of us are hoping and working for. Thank you, Ms. Pandestu, for this keynote speech. And savings are indeed more important than ever in these difficult times. And therefore, the European Microfinance Platform has released this publication with best practices and lessons on encouraging effective and inclusive savings from all the semi-finalists as well as the three finalists that you will meet today. And this publication can be found on the page of this stream below uh, the screen. Out of the... And out of 70 applications from 37 countries, Three finalists have been chosen by a selection committee to compete for the 100,000 euro award. And the two runners up, they will get 10,000 euro each. Ready? And here are our three finalists by alphabetic order. Our first finalist is Busa Gonofa Microfinance from Ethiopia, represented by its general manager, Mr. Tresham Dayasu. Selected in recognition for its doorstep deposit collection service. Our second finalist is Muktinabat Bikas Bank from Nepal, represented by Mr. Govinda Bahadur Raut, the chief in charge of small and micro banking. Selected in recognition for its solidarity based group savings model. And our third finalist is Renaka from Benin represented by its general manager, Mr. Dieudonné Ganvo, selected in recognition for its Tontin doorstep services and promotion of savings behavior via community savings and credit groups. And all three finalists have developed savings programs with tailor-made money collection methods. And I suggest that we will go now live to Ethiopia to our first uh, finalist. Mr. Dayaso, you are the general manager of uh, Busa Gonofa Microfinance. What was your reaction when you heard that your institution were, was among the finalists of uh, this year's European Microfinance Award? Wow. It's just a thrilling experience. It's also an honor to be recognized with this uh, being finalist for this prestigious award. Really, it is a recognition also of the effort that we are doing in terms of reaching low-income groups. And it's also a recognition of the fact that financial, formal financial service providers have actually left out the poor to informal saving mechanisms like deposit collectors and the cooks only, which is very expensive. I think it's really a thrilling moment for me, but also most importantly for our customers because their constraints and barriers have been recognized and I'm extremely happy and thank you. I'm proud of it. A well-deserved recognition as a microfinance institution, you are working in a politically fragile country. So let's have a look at how it all started, given this difficult environment. Ethiopia, the second most populated country of Africa, has an economy that is primarily focused on agriculture, which makes it highly sensitive to climate variations, shortages and political conflicts. In 1999, when more than 50% of the population was living in extreme poverty, the microfinance institution, Busa Ganofa, was founded as a non-governmental organization. Since then, it has followed the Ethiopian economy, 
which has gradually transitioned towards the textile and service industry. In 2016, in order to improve the living standards of its beneficiaries, Busaganofa offered a new savings product called Dejaf Ecube, a modern version of an old-fashioned way of saving widely used in Africa, the main objective being for the craftsman or the trader to fix a reachable savings target. By developing the principle of doorstep banking, Busa Ganofa has made it easy to acquire new customers who do not have the time or means of saving properly. It is the banking agent who comes to the land to support his clients. Voluntary savings accounts, term deposits, obligatory savings accounts and establishment of rural community services, Busa Ganofa solutions that to date more than 100,000 beneficiaries have made use of. Clients are supported and advised on a daily basis to put projects into practice with the aid of the microfinance institution. So Busaganova has developed a savings program to support the informal sector based on a doorstep money collection service. In our next video, we will now see how this works on a daily basis. Here is a portrait of Alem Negash, a shop owner benefiting from the savings program. We are at Asala, 120 kilometers from the capital, Addis Ababa. Since the death of her husband, Alam Nagash has been bringing up her three children alone and also takes care of her mother. In order to provide for the needs of her family, she runs a shop at the market in the center of town where she sells household goods. Her little business is going well and Alam has decided to save some of her income by setting up a Busa Ganofa Dejaf Ikub savings account. Alam does not need to close her shop and go to the bank to deposit her money. The banking agent comes to her in her shop three times a week. Each time he passes, she gives him on average 300 Ethiopian burr, about 20 euros a week. Alam knows that if her agent didn't come to the shop to collect the money from her, she would spend it. The quality of the relationship between the client and the agent, as well as the almost daily monitoring, are the keys to the success of Dejaf Iku. And Alam's savings, of course, still remain available to her. She can withdraw money whenever she needs it. Recently, she used some of her savings to buy a water tank for her kitchen. Her goal now is to expand her shop and develop her business. So this is a great way to encourage savings. Mr. Daya, so what is the current uh, sanitary situation in Ethiopia and how does it impact uh, your activities? Yeah, of course, in, like in many African countries, COVID expand, has continued to expand, but it was not really severe in terms of uh, its sales impact. Uh, how, and in Japan, also, the government didn't really lock up Nevertheless, there should ob obviously some physical distancing measures put in place. Uh, transportation, you know, the number of people uh, taking transport should be reduced, etc. This has got uh, a serious collateral damage on economic activities and the livelihood of the poor. And many of them, you know, they lost their business, their income. They also, we, because of this situation, we also stopped uh, deposit collection and pick up door to door because of the health situation. Now, after, between April, after this was between April up to September. Since October, however, life is becoming returning back to normal. People have now restarted savings and also restarted deposit collection. We also continue to provide now the loan service, particularly the deposit collection, is now becoming. Uh, a bit back to normal. But still, the economic downturn has affected definitely the income of the uh, low-income groups. So that is good news that life goes on. Uh, if Busaganova wins this award, uh, what are your plans? So will the doorstep deposit pickup system remain one of your priorities? Yeah, if uh, for hopefully if we win this award, definitely we'll invest on this um, the Jaffa Cuba initiative 
We want to expand it, it is still in very limited number of brands. We want to take them to large scale to reach tens of thousands of uh, low income groups that depend on informal services. We also want to invest on technology to automate the deposit collection, such as, you know, to invest on a handheld point of sales device that will interact with our, with our core banking. And there are also some works that remain in terms of staff training and developing modules for plant education as well. So great plans in store uh, on your side. Uh, thank you for now. Stay online as I will introduce our next uh, finalist. And that is the Muktinat Bikas Bank from Nepal, a bank specialized in serving remote areas of the country. And here's a short video to, to show us what they do. Even if today Nepal is trying to highlight its strengths in terms of tourism, with mountaineering and trekking, it is still agriculture that employs almost a third of the active population, and 90% of the Nepalese live in rural zones. The country also relies on its emigrated workers. Almost 30% of its GDP comes from repatriated income from the Nepalese working abroad. We are at Pokhara, the second most important city in the country. It is here the Muktinat Bikas Bank was created in 2007. From the beginning, the goal of this traditional bank was to cover the whole territory, especially those zones that were the most remote and difficult to access, like the villages in the mountains, there where no bank was prepared to set itself up. In developing an inclusive branch of its business, Muktinat Bikas Bank specifically targets women in order to offer them access to a large choice of savings products. Retirement, sickness, life insurance, group savings or personal savings, obligatory or voluntary. Thanks to the continued work of the agents in the remote zones to meet their clients, Muktinat Bikas Bank currently has 130,000 small savers. The bank plans to continue its work in terms of education in saving and the digitalization of its services to help the isolated inhabitants even more. And online you can see now Mr. Rout, he's the chief in charge of small and micro banking. We just saw a general presentation of your organization. What was your reaction when you heard uh, that the Muktinad Bikas Bank was selected as a finalist this year? Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> a very good evening and namaste from Nepal. Respected Her Royal Highness, Grand Duchess of Luxembourg, Excellencies, Mr. Franz, Luxembourg Minister for Development Cooperation and Humanitarian Affairs, member of juries, delegates, fellow nominees, and the audience from the world, of this microfinance, European Microfinance Award 2020. It is a huge honor for Muktinath Vikas Bank to be nominated for this prestigious award. All the hard work and the dedication of my entire organization to serve the need of the bottom of the pyramid from the time of its inception has truly been recognized now. Uh, it has given us even more encouragement to continue in the future with greater force and be more beneficial to the community we serve. I would like to thank our valued customer who have been getting financial services from us without their trust and love, we are nothing. The team Muktinath members who traveled restlessly to the doorstep of our customers are, our, uh, are highly appreciated. Tons of thanks goes to uh, jury members who judged us uh, thoroughly, last but not the least. I would like to thank our all supporters and well users who directly and indirectly always encourages us to reach more and more low income people and our valued customer. Thank you. We are very to participate in this August organization uh, ceremony. Thank you. Yeah, and I think that uh, trust and love is uh, something that we all, all of us need in this difficult times. So, so, and I suggest that we have a look now at how uh, Mukt. Tinat Bikas Bank reaches its clients. How you do that? Since the start of its microfinance business, Muktinat Bikas Bank's clientele have been mainly women living far away from large urban areas. Saving through information. This could be the Nepalese bank's motto. Every month, 
the Muktanat Bikas Bank agent, Manoj, goes to the little village of Kalika, situated in the mountains 200 kilometers from the capital of Kathmandu. The appointments enable the proposal of savings products adapted to each individual. It is also the opportunity for each of these women to take advantage of the home banking services. They can entrust the agent with their savings or withdraw up to 50,000 Nepalese rupees, 350 euros, right here without needing to go to a bank. These appointments also give the agents of Muktinat Bikas Bank the opportunity to pass on free information on how to efficiently manage a household budget or a little business. I'm loving Lloyd Teacher Gordon Varesa. Among these women, Bindu Bujal is today depositing money into her retirement savings plan and into an insurance for the whole family. This woman lives alone with her three children. She manages a little chicken farm and a market garden business. Her husband has been working in Qatar for nine years. He pays into a savings account with his salary from abroad. Thanks to the saving solutions offered by Muktinat Bikas Bank to people working abroad, Bindu would like to expand her breeding business when her husband returns in a couple of years. So we see that this is a good example of women empowerment. Um, what is the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on your clients and also on your bank's activity? Yeah, it's uh, in Nepal too. The COVID-19 has been uh, hitting economic and health condition of many people. It is guessed that, that now COVID is spread in the community level, especially low-income people are highly impacted by the pandemic. So far, Nepal has reported more than 200 15,000 cases and uh, nearly 1,300 dead cases till date. Uh, but <clears throat> fortunately, there, there is no any uh, death case recorded up from our uh, client. And uh, in case of uh, our operation, we totally shut down for four months because of countrywide lockdown. Later on, uh, rapid spread, spread of COVID-19 is when government lifted out the lockdown, then the spread of COVID-19 was very high. So we are not far away from the effect of COVID-19. Many of our client and staff has been uh, seen positive cases, either in themselves or the, in their family members. Uh, now they have been living in isolation or in quarantine is uh, hampering our daily activities. Uh, and. Uh, COVID-19 uh, has uh, come up with great challenges for livelihood of our client and uh, they have been withdrawing uh, their saving uh, to maintain their livelihood and daily activities and uh, the now uh, it, saving is being a means of living in this crisis situation but uh, on the other, other hand saving is uh, now creating another opportunity to cope with the, this kind of emergencies and this is seen like a more importance of saving even more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So we can only all hope uh, for the situation to improve. Um, Mr. Raut, if you win uh, the European Microfinance Award, what will you use the money for? Do you still plan to, do, to go on with the digitization process? Yeah, well, yeah, we are thinking to go digitalization. Yeah, I, I just miss your voice a bit. Yeah, we, we are, if we win this award, then definitely we are thinking to uh, roll out a digitalization with uh, some sort of um, increase in mobile banking uh, services. And the quick response is the new technology that is very easy to use and convenient for even uh, less educated people. So we are thinking to establish more merchant in the rural and semi urban area because it can break the gender and the uh, geographic barriers. So in addition to that, we are thinking to roll out even intensively financial and digital, digital literacy. Uh, likewise, we are also planning to uh, incentivize, uh, develop some incentive packages to our staff member and the 
clients who use uh, digital services more and definitely the marketing of digital uh, channels is also very important to reach out larger segment of the people so definitely we will uh, use that award money in the digitalization of our operation and services to reach out more and more lower segment of people and the women thank you yeah thank you uh, we are hearing you very well but uh, the the picture is not that good but uh, we are happy that we can at least hear you so stay online um, i will continue and uh, introduce our Third finalist, notre dernier finaliste, trouve au Bénin. Our last finalist uh, is in Benin. Our last finalist is in Benin. Mr. Gnanvo, your managing director of Renaka in Benin, is a national network of village cashiers and savings services. It's a network present in 12 areas, districts of the country. Mr. Gnanvo, how did you react when you l were aware of the nomination of uh, the NACA as finalist for the European Microfinance Awards? How did you react to this announcement? Uh, a Royal ha Highness, Mr. Fayo, dear participants of the Grand Jury, of the High Jury, ladies and gentlemen, of the inclusive finance of Luxembourg, I'd like to tell you that when I heard this information, that announcement, we're very glad, very happy. The joy would have also have been greater if I could have attended this ceremony in Luxembourg. So if, thank you very much to all of you for all your work and your support. Thank you for being with us today. Now we're going to see what Renaka proposes to his clients. Benin is a little West African country next to Nigeria. It has 12 million inhabitants. This young, principally rural population earns its income from agriculture, particularly cotton production. It is in Boikon, 100 kilometers away in the north, that Renaka Bana was established. Renica is the national network of self-reliant village savings and loan banks. This network, which functions like a cooperative, covers more than half of the territory, with more than 263 agents, who are mainly women. The institution offers money transfers, loans, local savings, and this with complete confidence. Renica Bernat advises and supports its small entrepreneurs, with the aim of helping them to make their businesses profitable. Savings collected at home or at work are used to finance the loans of other members of the cooperative. This network of village banks is one of the most important in Benin. They are among the very few who offer their services to this vulnerable population. Today, 180,000 small independents, mainly women, are taking advantage of the Renica Bernat services. And one way of saving is based on the traditional service called Tontin. I suggest you discover what it is and how is Tontin collected in some areas of the country. At Renica Bana, microfinance cooperative, we offer loans but also different types of savings accounts. Among them, the Tontin, designed for independence with very small incomes, inspired by the African Tontin which is the trustworthy pooling of savings in a little group. Donatien lives in Zanvier, 20 kilometers from Cotonou. He has a biology degree, but is unemployed. In order to survive, he has started a small pig, chicken and duck farm. His Renica agent, Denise, supports him on a daily basis. Therefore, it was only natural for him to opt for the tontine. His small savings are collected daily from his home, which saves this new entrepreneur a lot of time. Parce qu'avec cette tontine, ça te permet quand même de mettre de côté au moins ce que tu gagnes de façon quotidienne. Au lieu de garder de l'argent sur toi à la maison, pour, vous savez, lorsque tu as de l'argent sur toi à la maison, tu es tenté de le dépenser comme tu veux. To secure and speed up these transactions, the financial cooperative has developed a digital tablet. It allows a lot of transactions to be recorded and information to be sent in real time to the computer at headquarters. 
Sylvia, who has started producing natural juice, is already making use of this new financial technology. Chez eux, la sécurité des finances est garantie. J'ai confiance en eux et je, je remets la vie de mon entreprise entre leurs mains. This new way of saving is a suitable solution for most of the craftsmen, breeders and farmers. More than 20,000 are members. It helps them to have more peace of mind when considering the future of their businesses. With daily collection, in some cases, how has COVID-19 impacted the activities of uh, Renaka and its clients? I think that in the first moments of COVID, we suffered a lot. Our activities suffered a lot. In Benin, since uh, last 9th, no 9th November, we had more than 2,000 cases, confirmed cases. 2,500 cured and 43 deceased. The government has taken measures, as in any other countries, to lock down the economic capital, where most of our activities converge. So activities of our agents were pretty much reduced because the, class, the clients were scared. Very little activities in our agencies, so we've been really severe hit during the third, the three third months of the COVID. And then afterwards, trust returned and activities resumed with credit savings and the program of a collection has been severely hit during the first months of the COVID. But for now, I think the situation is better. And if Renaka wins the prize today, you mentioned in your application that you wanted to invest in the development of this network. You would like to set up in departments of the country which is still not served by this uh, network. Is it still a priority for you? despite the situation. Well, yes, it's our priority number one, because without digitization, we cannot secure this activity. As you see, when someone doesn't use an application in real time, when information doesn't reach our agencies, well, it opens the, the door to any kind of risks. So we will continue working on digitization, and it requires more investments in new areas. So we will have to hire new agents who will need a new material to do their job properly. And as you have understood in our videos, we need to buy more tablets to allow these agents to work on the field. So you will focus on digitization. Thank you very much, Mr. Gnamvo. The finalists uh, for your input and insights. Uh, we will see you in a bit, so be prepared for the announcement of the winner in a few minutes. And this trophy here will be sent out to the winner together with the financial reward of 100,000 euros. And a few words now first on the members uh, of the high jury and on the selection process, because it is the high jury that selects the winner among the three finalists, and it is composed of national and international experts in financial inclusion, practitioners, high-level political and public figures, and last year's winner. And the members of this year's high jury are Minister Franz Bayer, Luxembourg's Minister for Development, Cooperation and Humanitarian Affairs that you've met before. Mr. Olivier Edelman, head of the microfinance unit from the European Investment Bank. Mr. Michel Magill, chairman of the Inclusive Finance Network. Ms. Elizabeth Ryan, former managing director of the Center for Financial Inclusion. Professor Dr. Hans Dieter Seibel from the University of Cologne. Mr. Ashok Shah, director of APA Insurance Limited. And Her Royal Highness, the Grand Duchess of Luxembourg, who chaired the high jury. 
and we are very honored that Her Royal Highness, the Grand Duchess of Luxembourg, will announce this year's winner. But before that, here's an important personal message from the Grand Duchess of Luxembourg. Dear friends of microfinance, it is with great pleasure that I stand before you today to announce the winner of the 11th European Microfinance Award. This 2020 edition, with the theme Encouraging Effective and Inclusive Savings, has received many innovative and varied candidacies. The high number of applications testifies to the ever-increasing interest in this economic model, which puts human values, ethics, and morality first. But it also shows that attitudes are changing. More and more people want to make investments that are socially responsible. This year, with the ongoing pandemic, it is more pertinent than ever to think about how to facilitate the processes of saving money as the risks of falling into extreme poverty, unfortunately, increase for millions of vulnerable people. Although the health crisis is not over yet, I believe in the capacity of these men and women. I believe in the strength of their resilience. And I believe above all in hope and solidarity. As Grand Duchess of Luxembourg, but also as President of the Grand Jury, you know how strong my commitment to microfinance has been over all these years. And I am proud of the importance that inclusive and sustainable finance represents today in Luxembourg. On behalf of the Grand Jury, I would like to congratulate the three finalists for their initiatives that enable vulnerable populations to benefit from essential services while ensuring access to savings, which is necessary for the development of small entrepreneurs and for women's autonomy. Thank you for helping to make this world a better place in which the word solidarity finds a place of pride. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no need to make you wait any longer. It's time to announce this year's grand winner for its adapted model of collective and solidarity savings that encourages positive savings. I have the honor and joy to congratulate Muktina Bikas Bank, winner of the 11th edition of the European Microfinance Prize. I sincerely hope this prize of 100,000 euros will allow you to strengthen the digital dimension of your bank. Congratulations again to the finalists of this 2020 edition. And I see a very, very happy face in Nepal. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. to the winner of the 2020 edition of the European Microfinance Award, the Muktinat Bikas Bank from Nepal. Congratulations to you, Mr. Raut. So you yeah, will receive you this much. trophy. <laughs> Did you expect to win today? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we were not sure that because of because of our uh, entire work from uh, working from last 40 years that uh, is leading us to in this stage. Definitely, we are very much happy and proud to be receive this European Microfinance Award of 2020. Yeah, at this moment, I would like to remember my Philly staff who restlessly, they travel to the community and they stay over two, three nights in the rural area and provide the doorstep service to the really needy people who are living very far away from the uh, city. So I'd like to dedicate this award to those my Philly staff who have been working very hard and entire Muktinath Bikas Bank team and our board members who, who has been uh, always encouraging small and micro banking team to move to the targeted people. 
And I, th and I would also like to invite all the viewers uh, around the globe to visit Nepal and visit Muktinath Vikas Bank and encourage even more us to uh, do even better way. And we would be more happy to welcome all the visitors from the globe to see our program and the impact what we have been uh, left in the community level. Thank you very much, and I would love to come and visit you, and I think uh, all the viewers around the globe who are assisting uh, this ceremony would certainly yeah. also enjoy coming and seeing you. So thank you very much. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. your yeah. prize, your achievement. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much to the jury team who has been uh, judged very thoroughly and uh, give us this opportunity to reach in this level. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Yeah, and we are already at the end of the 11th edition of the European Microfinance Award Ceremony and the focus uh, of the 2021 edition will be on microfinance and global health, one of Luxembourg's development and corporation priorities. And it will be organized again in November next year. So thank you all for your attention. Congratulations again to our winner and to our two runners up. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope that we can all meet and see each other next year in person at the ceremony at the European Investment Bank. Thank you for now. Stay happy, stay safe, all the best.